1930, my father, Max Fleischer, created a wonderful animated cartoon character called Betty Boop. She became an instantaneous worldwide movie star and has remained one ever since. Max and Betty made well over a hundred films together and virtually all of them are here in this truly definitive Betty Boop collection. Oddly enough, out of all those cartoons, my father and Betty appeared together in only one. And you can see that one in volume six and it's called Betty Boop's Rise to Fame. Obviously he had a great sense of humor. Even the letters he wrote me when I was a child always included an amusing drawing. Well, here's one he sent when my mother and I were vacationing in Miami Beach. If I say so myself, my father was a remarkable man. He was not only a fine creative artist, but an inventor, an innovator, and of course, a pioneer in the field of animated cartoons. I think you might like to know about some of his background and some of his accomplishments. Right from the beginning, he had a passion for drawing. And after graduating from public school in Brooklyn, New York, he continued his education at the Art Students League in Manhattan. At that time, one of the most important newspapers in the United States was the Brooklyn Daily Eagle. My father was so determined to become an artist that he went to the Brooklyn Daily Eagle and offered to pay them $2 a week if they would let him sit in the art department and watch the artists work. Well, the uh, Brooklyn Daily Eagle made him a, a counter offer. They'd pay him $2 a week to be an errand boy. He took the job and within a very few years he was not only working in the art department but had two comic strips of his own. He was still in his teens and probably the youngest comic strip artist in the country. He stayed at the Eagle for a few years and then he left and became a photo engraver for a while. After that he joined Popular Science Monthly as the art editor. He loved science and as he often told me he saw great art in machinery. You can get an idea of how he felt from this picture. No, it's not a photograph. It's my father's hand-drawn work of art. For the young Max Fleischer, working at Popular Science Monthly was the perfect job. Perfect, that is, until one day the editor of the magazine, a distinguished scientist named Waldemar Kampfert, changed his life. You see, at that time, in 1916, animated cartoons were considered more of a curiosity than anything else. They were actually difficult to watch because of their jerky and crude animation. They had a stiff, unnatural movement and weren't lifelike at all. Well, it seems that Dr. Kampfert had seen one of these crude animated curiosities the night before and had become quite irritated watching it. So the next day, he got hold of my father and said, Max, you're a smart young fellow. You know art, engraving, machinery, and science. Can't you figure out a way to make animated cartoons look better? That got him to thinking. And it wasn't long before he came up with a great idea. He invented and patented a machine that could project live action film on a glass screen, one frame at a time so that the movement in each frame could be traced onto a sheet of paper. He called this machine a rotoscope. His next problem was to build one. He'd used all of his savings, about a hundred dollars, in developing the idea. Now he needed funds to construct the apparatus. My mother came to the rescue. She had stashed away about three hundred dollars she'd saved out of her household money and gave it to him and told him to go ahead with his loony idea. Max's older brother, Charlie, was a great mechanic and they constructed the first crude rotoscope in the living room of our apartment in Brooklyn. If you look closely, you can make out the curtains, carpet, and a chair on the left side of the photo. 
And then he got his mother, my grandmother, to make a clown suit for his younger brother, Dave. And they went up on the roof of their apartment house where my father photographed Dave prancing around in the clown outfit for about a minute's worth of film. Now the real work started. The film of Dave was projected on a glass screen, a frame at a time, and my father meticulously traced each one, all 2,400 of them. But the job wasn't over yet. Every drawing had to be photographed frame by frame. The camera Max was using didn't have a proper shutter, so he had to use a lens cap, which he removed and replaced by hand for each of the 2,400 drawings. It was laborious work. My father kept his day job at Popular Science Monthly, and he and his brothers worked at the rotoscope from 7 at night to 3 or 4 in the morning. It took a year to do, and when they were finished, they projected the one-minute film they'd made on a four-inch square of cardboard. They had no idea if they had succeeded or not. The result was perfect. Max Fleischer had created the first lifelike animated drawings ever made, and the look of animated cartoons was changed forever. Because of the rotoscope, a curiosity became an industry. For a really good example of the use of the rotoscope, just take a look at our Betty Boop dancing the hula in Bamboo Isle. You'll find this delightful film in volume two of this wonderful collection. As Betty Boop's popularity grew and grew, Max Fleischer felt she deserved to be performing with some of the biggest musical stars of Broadway and radio. By combining live action and animation, he had her working with the top headliners of the day, Louis Armstrong, Ethel Merman, and the legendary Cab Calloway. My father told me that when Cab Calloway saw his first cartoon with Betty Boop, he actually fell off his chair with laughter and delight. They made a great team, and Calloway made three memorable pictures with Betty, all of them in volume two. Minnie the Moocher, Old Man of the Mountain, and Snow White. This film has been selected for inclusion in the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress. Betty Boop is the only real and lasting female star of animated cartoons. I have often been asked if I knew the secret of her success. Well, I've heard her described as being one part Shirley Temple and three parts Mae West. Maybe that's it. Certainly the fact that she was conceived as an adult character also had a lot to do with it. Just take a look at one of my favorite cartoons and you'll see what I mean. It's in volume six and it's called Any Rags. I must tell you that I treasure my memories of these wonderful Betty Boop cartoons. And thanks to Republic Pictures, now you can treasure them as well. And I treasure, too, the memories I have of the man who brought his wonderful creations out of the inkwell and onto the screen. My father, Max Fleischer.
I'm Richard Fleischer, and I hope you enjoyed watching these Max Fleischer classic Betty Boop cartoons. My father didn't realize he was creating a legend. He was just trying to bring laughter and happiness to the screen. With this definitive collection, Republic Pictures has made it possible for all of us to continue the laughter and the happiness. And for that, they have my heartfelt thanks. Mm -hmm.